came into into a reality because of the the joint efforts of a university and a major collector, Pan Atlantic University, what used to be called before Pan African University, now became Pan Atlantic University, has been interested in the arts for many years. Uh, we started with a, a virtual museum and then a collection that grew slowly, but grew over the years, on the one hand, and an interest the, the, the university has always had in the arts. On the other hand, Prince Shilon, one of the major collectors, not only in Nigeria, but in the whole continent, it was interested in preserving, displaying, and bringing out of his house and his stores, the incredible collection he has. Um, he says that he's probably the largest collection in Africa. And I had so much volume of art, artistic, that I was worried about what would happen to those, to those art pieces. And I observed those before me who had collected and had died. And what happened is that the works get missing and the, the creativity of the artist is not uh, documented, is not uh, celebrated, and it doesn't form part of our history. So and I was worried that I may go down the same way. In 2009, I benefited from a foreign trip by a foreign government. I don't want to mention the name. And um, one of the questions I asked them <coughs> repeatedly was how do you maintain your museum? How do you, how do you fund it? And the answers I got repeatedly was that all the revenues they generate is only 10% of the expenditure. So I came back to Nigeria and had to be thinking again about the, my original idea of converting my Lagos home into a museum, which meant, therefore, the issue of sustainability would be a big problem. So I now began to search for institutions that I can partner with. And why institutions? Institutions are necessary to ensure sustainability. Because we are all mortals, we have a finite period on art. And if you do not have institutions to, to back, an institution to back up the concept, you will end up having the same problem of those works being filtered away. That explains the birth of the Yemisi Shilon Museum of Art, an orange building located on the serene grounds of the Pan-Atlantic University, Ibejuleki, Lagos. It is not merely a viewing museum, but one that will educate those who are not inclined on how a piece of artwork communicates to the viewers. The director and designing architect of the museum, Spanish-born Jess Costalote, speaks on the theme by the curator, Ihiai Onwebucha. We are trying to preserve a collection and display a collection, but we are trying to do at the same time, to, we are trying to be an educational institution. This is a, a teaching museum. The focus of this museum are not tourists, are not visitors visitors in the sense of casual visitors who come, take a couple of photographs and, and go. What we want is to have an impact on people. That's why our primary audience will be young, young people and people who can devote some time to learn something. We want the people to leave this museum having learned something. Not only having seen something that is beautiful or something that is interesting, but having learned something and taking something with them. So this is a museum at the service of a mission that is an educational mission. And this collection has from very old works, like terracottas that are centuries old, to works that were produced recently. Works in different media, works from different ages, works from different parts of the country, works um, done for different purposes. So we have a really vast uh, collection. We decided, we engaged a, a professional curator, 
this case is Igeani and Webucha, who um, created a narrative story of what he wanted to say and how he wanted to say it. So we organized the display into two separate exhibitions, one of them in the ground floor, the other one in the first floor. The one in the ground floor is on, on materiality, on, on how Nigerian artists have been using different materials over the centuries. And there are works in clay, in wood, in paper, in bronze, in steel, in stone, discarded or repurposed materials, uh, foils, cloth. So it's, it's interesting to see them there and how with different materials, different styles, different periods, different purposes, artists have been creating works of, of quality. And that's what we want to show, how it, art is more than beautiful paintings or nice sculptures, that you can have art, as you have, for instance, a work here, a beautiful work, and a significant work by, by, um, um, by Eva Obodo, you have here uh, others in, uh, by, for instance, Kaineby with um, discarded materials that are, uh, are relevant, that are significant, that address issues, work made of charcoal pieces mm -hmm. or, or discarded uh, Rabina uh, packing. So uh, th this is one of the issues that the curator wanted to address and this is done in the first floor in the ground floor. In the first floor, the curator created a narrative about the position of the artists in society, or artists and society. Uh, some artists in traditional settings were at the service of either religious, ritual, ceremonial, uh, or whatever purposes. So they were creating with a purpose. In, um, in more recent times, the purposes change, so some artists have a, a, a heavy social concern, so their words are words that address issues, in some cases confronting society, like, like this one of Kainabi on the Niger Delta with the burnt uh, cans, uh, and the, he's, he's taking an issue there. So this exhibition explores that, how artists have been um, positioning or being positioned or being or working in society in different ways and, uh, over the centuries. The ground floor of the building has its walls painted in grey, few windows with dotted control lights and the angles show the use of architecture in enhancing the artwork which is hung and tagged materiality. Artworks made from terracotta, wood, metal, beads and fabric from artists like Jimo Braimo, discarded materials otherwise known as mixed media, can be found here. Other artists whose works are on this floor include the famous sculptor Lamidi Fakeye. So this is a sculpture, wooden sculpture by um, Lamidi Fakeye. Lamidi Fakeye is one of the greatest Yoruba sculptors ever. Um, what's really interesting about Lamidi Fakeye's works is that he carves straight up from one trunk of wood. He doesn't nail and he doesn't glue. So it's a straight trunk of wood all the way up. What's really fascinating about this is the amount of detail on every side of the work. So this amount of detail showing up here goes all the way around as far as is humanly possible to the back. Even to the intricate corners of the work, he tries to maintain the same amount of detail on every piece that he has. We are lucky to have a couple of these works. We have about 20 of them or more in, um, in possession, all donated by Prince Shilon. Miss Media artists have used materials ranging from cement bags to flattened soda cans, discarded packs, charcoal with copper wire, as well as enamel, Ankara, and paint to create such beautiful pieces. Dr. Eva Obodu, Beju Alatishe, Uche Joel Chima, Kainabi Osahei, and Olumide Onodipe are top names in this bracket. Art is subjective, 
and Egba born Larry Tejosho, an environmentalist artist, uses a lot of discarded materials. One of his works welcomes visitors to the building. Time-based art has also come to be with technology, depicting that art is not static. Take a look. The piece, Black Gold by Kainabi Osahe, shows the degradation of the Niger Delta region. The corrosion of metal with sunken eyes tells it all. Movement by Olumide Onodipe is about migration, while Masquerade by George Edozie is a mix of cloth and metal. This piece has her baby hair made from metal spoons. The first floor is themed art and society by the curator, depicting the influence of each one on the other. Artists that have exhibited their works cut across contemporary art, beautiful things, Nigeria's struggle, pre- and post-independence, to mention a few. Ben Osage, Jerry Buhari, Dele Jegede, Uche Okeke, Ben Enwonwon, MBE, and El Anutsi, a Ghanaian who has lived in Nigeria for over four decades and considered the biggest living African artist, who has interpreted art in the African way with showing the merging of cultures. Several renowned artists have the L-shaped walls with their various works on this floor. The Oshogbo section on this floor has world-acclaimed textile artist Nike Okundaye's batik piece strategically placed with others by Twin 77 and Rufus Ogundele on display. Olaumi Banjo, female painter of the work Comforter, talks us through how she used the palette knife instead of the brush. On a normal scene, it's more of the mom doing the comforting of the you know, child or the children. So the, the main reason why I have it reversed is because you know, sometimes you don't really know what some women go through until you uh, probably in their shoes or you observe them and you or you hear from them their experiences or what they're going through they they um, you know sometimes you expect them to be like the superwoman who carries the body and she's not meant to complain or just go ahead and do it it's your role in life but you know they have what they go through they have their own pain they have their own down moments this situation is a child trying to comfort the mom because some kids see what's going on they are not, um, sometimes you don't know they notice or observe all these things. So sometimes the kids are there to comfort their parents and to uplift them. And just for the society to know as well that, you know, they're humans and they go through things as well. It's oil on canvas and it's textured. And um, the blending process was through, you know, palette knife instead of the normal brush. So I did the blending through the palette knife, with the palette knife, and yeah. So that took more time? More time than normal. Yemisi Shilon, Africa and Nigeria's foremost private art collector and Financial Times of London listed among the 100 in the world, has over 7,000 artworks, 1,000 of which he has given to this museum. So we have a really vast uh, collection. Now, this, this museum cannot display all the works that we have in the collection because Yemiji Prince Shilon gave more than 1,000 works. Here we can display probably, depending on how the, the exhibitions are organized, between 300 and 400, no more. So we have to rotate, we want to rotate to make these works known, and we have to select. So when I chose the best quality of my works in Abeokuta and Lagos, and also from the storage, you know, the, the, the works I have in storage, you know, to give them 1,000 of, of the works under the Amoba YMC Adidu Inshila Foundation. It has been four years of construction, fluid space that flows in a way that from any corner one can literally see everywhere, all linked to one flowing direction with visitors able to appreciate the works on display from multiple views and angles. Prince Yemisi Shilon shares a few thoughts. The plan is for the museum to rotate out of the 1,000 
uh, because the, f the museum space will take about 400 works of art. So there is a possibility of rotating them every two years. And don't forget, the museum is going to continue to acquire works. And even as I speak, a lot of uh, works have been acquired. I've since acquired some works, even after the, the grant has been given. You know, whenever I go around and I see works that I think should be a museum piece, I still buy it. I give credit to, uh, to the, the, the architect, Jess Casilete. He did the design. And it's very unique. I remember when he originally came up with the concept, he talked about he wants to have the longest cantilever. And um, when he came up with the, the, the body, the model, it was so beautiful. As of now, I feel very, very fulfilled. I feel very fulfilled. Uh, not in terms of even just the design. I feel fulfilled in the sense that I'm assured that I'm with, in the, with the right set of people and the right institution in um, building Nigeria's first privately funded public museum. At the Yemisi Shilon Museum of Art, the spectator becomes part of the spectacle. Mm -hmm.